very, very, very first broadcast. When I interviewed for the job here, that was June of 2005. The dean at the time was Ray Wallace. And Ray Wallace was very interested in starting a radio station. He brought up, during my interview, uh, he left me with the impression that if I couldn't tell him how we were going to start a radio station, he probably wasn't going to offer me the job. He seemed very keen on the radio station. Um, Jeff, when I got here, Jeff Jacobs, who was involved with Student Life then and now, was really uh, the person who was, who was ramrodding everything. And, and Jeff Jacobs really is the person responsible for having a station here pretty much. Uh, Jeff went to other colleges and looked around, I, I know particularly at SCAD in Savannah, <coughs> to see how they were running radio stations and um, to see if it was doable here. What we knew was an over-the-air station that broadcast over the airwaves was going to be very, very difficult because it's just hard to get a license these days. They're almost all taken up. So we looked at what we wound up doing, an internet station. But because of Ray Wallace's kind of asking me what to do, I'd call a friend of mine who's really into this in Dallas, Texas, and he had suggested we try podcasting. Uh, that I didn't really go very far. I didn't see what the students wanted. The internet thing seemed to be the way to go. And so, by 2006, uh, Jeff Jacobs and then Tom Barnett, who was the head of uh, what we called then CAIS, Communication Arts Integrative Studies, and has now kind of been folded into VPA, and I uh, were, were talking about how to do this. But once again, Jeff Jacobs really was the guy who, who did, made most of the decisions and, and really got everything off the ground. I'm Jeff Jacobs. I'm Associate Dean of Students here at Clayton State University. I'm also uh, over the Housing, Residence, Life, and Student Conduct program. I've been at Clayton State for almost 20 years, so I've had a lot of opportunity to work with student activities over these years, and one of those activities was actually the implementation and development of uh, CSIR, Clayton State Internet Radio. Uh, I guess we're approaching the five-year anniversary, which is hard for me to believe, but actually uh, it was a number of years before that uh, that we worked on CSIR and finally got a core group of students who uh, really sustained uh, some strong interest in developing CSIR, stuck with uh, some of the good, the bad, and the ugly in terms of getting it off the ground, and eventually we secured uh, the budget and the other resources needed uh, to support CSIR and we had our first going live on the air. Uh, I guess we're approaching five years again, so uh, it was a very exciting initiative and I'm glad we're still going forward. It pretty much started out um, about my sophomore year. I uh, was really reading a lot about breaking into broadcast and I was really excited about um, radio. I really wanted to get into radio. And um, one day after class, I was um, I asked one of my com, uh, com professors, Dr. Clark, I asked him, I said, um, do we have a radio station? And he was like, no, um, we don't have a radio station, but I've heard some things from the administration that uh, they might want to get an internet radio station started here on campus at Clayton State. Uh, one of the most exciting things that I can remember about uh, forming Clayton State Internet Radio was it was just a lot of brilliant people. Uh, there were uh, probably several of us that actually started the group itself and then it grew into such an enormous amount of people that we were just like fabricated. Um, but I think all in all, I am so happy that the radio station is currently still operating and that we as a group were able to get uh, such a wonderful accomplishment um, achieved while we were here at Clayton State University. What we really wanted to do was connect with the campus and not really, I wouldn't say influence people, but to be kind of like their voice if they have a complaint or um, or just spread the word, because basically we're a media outlet, and we'll find stories and 
we'll post it up or we'll talk about it and even keeping up with current events people would um, would tune in. Theo Celeste and I, one, another one of the founding members, did a uh, radio show, um, The Morning Quack, and then it became um, um, We Between the, uh, the Lines, which was a funny show. Um, he was the Sofa King and I was Boss Hall. Um, that went on for about uh, a year or so, so it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I had a great experience with the radio station and um, yeah, I can't wait to tell you all about it. <laughs> I was doing photography at the time, so I wanted to see if I could help out and push my skills in that area to get them in the studio, whether doing setups, events, and everything else. But mainly what I ended up doing was helping to set up where the original stu studio was, which is in the U University Center, second floor, where we have the student suites now. So that was pretty much the main gist of how everything went, but it was very hectic, but still forming because we learned to A, depend on each other, and B, take what skills one person had and see how we could apply it in certain sets. It showed me that if I wanted something bad enough, I could get it and nothing could stop me. And it, it, it could not, it went from, you know, doing shows to hooking up with people who at first didn't want to have anything to do with us. But after they saw our efforts and they saw what we were producing, they had no choice. They began to call us. <laughs> My dad's a musician. I grew up around music. Um, he's still a musician and um, he manages a band. And um, it's just a part of me. Um, I've always had a lot of uh, musical influence and I've always just loved getting to know other people. and. You know, I just think radio is really special because it's uncensored and I think that's why people enjoy it because it's not so uh, edited as some of the other things that we see throughout the media. Um, I've always been a DJ since I was in high school and it's something that just influenced me to do other things in life because when I'm alone I'm probably listening to music. When I'm with people, I'm probably listening. When I'm driving, I'm listening to music. And it's just one of those things that's just universal. Uh, it doesn't mean I only do one genre, but um, if you're open to other genres, it just really opens your mind into other things. Because if you're open to more than one genre, you're open to other people's views, to other people's culture, and you just really like learn a lot from just not just listening to what's on commercial radio. I cannot stress how important uh, media, radio media, television, writing, journalism, media in itself, it has to be a part of the curriculum. But it shouldn't be limited to just writing, nor should it just be limited to television or radio. It should encompass every aspect of media. Well, as most people know, Clayton State is, is a growing institution and when you are at a college or a university, you want to be able to have uh, a variety of offerings for students. And so one of the things that really kind of rounds out to me a student's experience is having uh, those media uh, opportunities. We have a number of students who uh, either want just an extracurricular interest in that or maybe want to move along into a career path uh, that way. Either way, it gives students uh, a little taste of, of that opportunity and, and perhaps along the way still developing skills that can be used uh, in, in all careers and fields. So again, I think you know having that uh, opportunity to experience something different, try something new, and, and again, giving students uh, opportunities to grow and develop uh, in, in a variety of areas at the campus. A school anywhere needs some type of media outlet, something where students can have their voices heard. Most schools have a newspaper and you know, that's great and we have a great newspaper. But you need something else, especially with times changing, with um, you know, with uh, social media, with uh, blogging, different things like that. You need something that can reach those other students who may not pick up a paper. Um, with Atlanta being a huge music center that it is and being the big entertainment center that it is, a radio station or television station, that's something that keeps you know, a student body going. 
it wants students, it, it, it asks students to be involved and it lets them, it gives them a chance to speak up or just be loud or, 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 or be crazy. For me, I'm quiet and it gave me a chance to let go and, and show off my crazy side. Um, it's just great. I think that, I think for us, it's something that's been a part of our history for a very long time. I mean, Clayton State had a closed circuit television station when it was a junior college. And I didn't know that until I talked to one of the alumni that I uh, ended up working for a long time ago. But I think that's really cool that we had that. Then here comes a radio station and it continues that legacy. And then not long after that, student, new students got the idea that, hey, let's start a television station. And look at all the stuff that's come out of that. So it's very important. It's something that's definitely needed and I hope stays on this campus. I think a lot of people get wrapped around and thinking that uh, the new that the radio station or that you know student media is only for communications majors, but there are so it serves as a media outlet for the campus. And that's where organizations um, from all different majors come and can come and well you know let people know what's going on with their organizations or voice their opinions about different things and even going out into the surrounding community you know I know some of the things we've covered have been um, community issues that have hit home here at Clayton State so um, I think it's in a very important part and I think you know they've done a lot uh, so far we've done some really awesome things and I'm really excited to see where it's we are a very diverse campus, as you know, uh, not just ethnically, but age-wise. I mean, we have a whole lot of students who are over 25, and um, a whole lot of students from different uh, different classes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, economic classes. Uh, the student media bring all these people together. They tell you what's going on here. They keep you in the loop. They keep you informed. Uh, the best thing I tell people all the time: one of the best things student media can do, especially school like this is not tell the students what's going on, but tell the students what's really going on. You know as well as I do, anybody who's listening to this, you all know this is to be true. If you don't get it officially from the student media, you're going to gossip. There's going to be rumor, and there's going to be stories. You're not going to not talk, but you're going to talk and not know what the truth is. CSIR, I know they mainly play a lot of music and they do things like that, but you know, CSIR is just one way, the TV station, the bench tree, to get the word out what's really going on on this campus and to be the, the, the voice of the students. A radio station is very important to the student body. I feel this way because a uh, radio station allows the student body to be able to express themselves uh, through music, uh, through topics. Um, you know, uh, students who have a voice on campus, but you know, uh, they, they're not being heard. It gives them that medium to be able to have their voice heard out there. Uh, a student who wants to, um, who has ambitions, it gives them that platform to uh, uh, put their ambitions out there, out there, their, their talents out there, uh, from doing the shows, from from us starting a regular event like uh, open mic every first Thursday of the month, having those consistent things, it allows students over campus to be able to, uh, um, who want to be heard, who have something to say, to have to be heard, and to. Uh, and to be able to express themselves. So it was, it's a very good thing and it, it, it shouldn't go anywhere but up. As I again referred to earlier, uh, those three years uh, was a, a lot of heavy lifting, uh, a lot of sort of ups and downs, but together uh, as the advisor and with the students who were involved, we really uh, managed to get through it and we sort of persevered all of us together and so you know we had uh, we sat through a lot of meetings uh, dealing with the challenges and frustrations and successes and so I have really good memories of working with the students in that regard and I, I think my my fondest memory is when we were preparing to go live for the first time and uh, just the excitement around that and when we really we had our equipment in place we flipped that switch uh, there was a huge amount of excitement around that I, I, I will never forget the students and their faces when they were realizing that finally they were on the air and they really realized that dream of starting uh, this project we did a lot of fundraisers to get uh, a lot of the equipment that we first got in which was the bare basics of anything you needed to have a college radio station 
or just to have a radio station on the internet because our budget was very limited I think we sold ice cream <laughs> and I, I still remember that day because the ice cream kept melting because we, all we had was a little cooler and like two bags of ice <laughs> I can remember when we did um, the voter registration. I don't necessarily remember about the ice cream, but may, that may have had something to do with this particular uh, incident. Uh, we actually took over, um, what do they call it? The UC? The, the UC uh, Square, the square that is right between the library and- oh, the quad. The quad. And uh, when I say we blast this university, <laughs> If they had never ever heard of Clayton State Internet Radio, that was the first time they heard of us. That, that 2008 election still really stands out because people were so excited about it. And I mean, just really standing there, out, out, standing in the quadrangle and just talking, stopping people and talking to them. And everybody was so motivated and so excited because, you know, when it was clear halfway through the day that Obama was going to win, and the students here were, were just so excited. You don't really see that level of excitement on this campus all that much. That really stands out to me. Um, honestly, one of the funnier things is, is some of the rooms that we didn't use because they would show us rooms that were like closets and say, well, let's do it, and, and no, it wouldn't. Um, and you know, everybody was trying the very best they could to help us and find a space. It's just that nobody knew what we needed. And some of those rooms were just, to me, not gonna work. And of course, they would st sit there really happy that they were able to show us this closet and, and it just wasn't gonna work. But um, I, will, I will remember for years that 2008 election because the students were so up and motivated and had the, the mics out and on the campus and talking, just grabbing people when they came by and talking to them. And you just don't see that that much these days, any campus. It was just great to see the students that motivated. Man, I was so lost, man. Like, I didn't, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I, I worked on computers. And, um, I, you know, I worked in the hub, and I just was, you know, really trying to find my way. And uh, student media showed me uh, what my uh, a passion that I had. It got me involved in a lot of stuff. I mean, from CSIR, I, I you know, like I said, originally I came to Cal uh, Clayton State to uh, go to class and go home. I messed up before at my old school. This was my second chance. I wasn't going to mess it up. But the big component I ended up missing was that social involvement, that networking. And CSIR was, was, was my jump start for that. It was my, um, it was my catalyst. It, um, from there, I applied and I became an RA. I was one of the first RAs on campus. Um, ended up meeting great people here on campus. Um, Jeff Jacobs, he was our advisor when we first started and um, he's a great person. Got a chance to meet him, but not only that, I had the opportunity to work on campus um, after I graduated. And I think one of the cool things about just any student involvement, especially CSIR, is you know, with the radio station, people are going to hear you. So you're giving your interview right there. <laughs> you're, um, you're you're broadcasting yourself to the entire campus. So when you start doing other things, it's like, ah, oh, you're that guy. You're on. You know, I heard you before. It not only was it something that I was passionate about, but it really kind of shaped shaped me into a young professional. Um, gave me a new way um, a new way of uh, conducting business. Um, not only with just my peers, but um, administration as well, and just seeing how important it is to you know to how to how to carry yourself on on campus and interact with other people. So I think it's very important. It gave me the leeway to where I am now with uh, Blog Talk Radio, where I'm managing myself, I'm coming up with my own format, I'm researching, I'm reaching out to individuals and institutions for interviews, as well as just um, going out into the community, into the local schools and just talking and trying to keep uh, broadcasting a part of our life. We would do this in the UC and people would gather around and listen to us roast people and just talk about nonsense in the UC. Is and that how this team formed? Team? We, we just homeboys. Right. We just sat there doing stuff. That's what we did. Then they offered us a show. 
Then they was like, you should be on the radio. And then they were like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> because the first thing we did was compile a list of words we couldn't say <laughs> and said them. <laughs> and then we compared that to a list of words that were acceptable to say. <laughs> Ballcock was one of our favorites. Backhoe. <laughs> Pussy widow. I mean, these are normal words. And there was nothing that you could, and then we were speaking code. We had code for our listeners. So if you followed us on Twitter, because we were the only true interactive radio show, people would tune in during class with one headphone in and follow us on Twitter and be tweeting what we're saying or what we're talking about, giving suggestions and things like that. It got to a point with the show that, okay, it was just me and him, and then Clay was a regular. Um, Ornella. Ornella was a regular. We had Blair. Blair. Yep. Mm -hmm. Reggie, we, we started accumulating cast members. Cedar? Yeah. Crazy hippie. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody uh, everybody served their purpose. Reggie was stat man. He would sit in that chair over there and he would look up stats for about what we talking about. Uh, <clears throat> now we would often chime, chime in with their lady's perspective. Or to tell me that I'm getting him in trouble again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we were the only show with actual graphics, a website, um, well, a URL rather, um, yeah. our own music, you drops, know. drops, everything, all kinds of stuff. We were the first ones to do that. I say get involved. That's, that's pretty much all I can say, get involved. You meet a lot in really cool people, um, people that you might have never spoke spoke to before, you get to meet them and you know, once you get involved, that's when you really enjoy your experience here on campus. I think a lot of people sometimes, you know, just go to class and go home, but I think when you get involved, whether it be student media, radio station, you know, whatever it is, I think getting involved just as a student on campus really adds to the experience of being a, a student. and. Just gives you a, that that much more something special to remember when you when you graduate. Some shows are gonna be good, some shows are gonna be bad, some topics are just gonna be better than others, and stuff you're gonna be more willing to discuss. But until you figure out how to incorporate everything to make a good show, it's not really gonna do anything unless you put forth that effort to put it together yourself. Keep working on what you did here. Make a tape of yourself. Um, just send a tape in now, this is what I can do. If that doesn't cut anymore, maybe you want to, if you can do your own webpage while you're here and start tweeting and blogging while you're here on the station, get your name out there, prove that you can get your name out before the public. If you get fans, if you get anything, you get responses, you get emails. When you go out there looking for an, employ an employer, you want to show them that you can work with the public on the radio and you know to use that medium to its best. So make a record of what you do. Do as many different things as you can. One of the great things about student media is, in one semester, you can get a wide range of experiences. You can be on the air, you can be behind the air, you can write, you can not write, you know, you can do all kinds of things. <coughs> the best jobs you get, whether it's student media, internships, part-time jobs, or here at school, you want to get as much experience as you can. So when you go out looking for your career job, you've got a lot of experience. And student media can give you a lot of experience. We dictate how many hours you have to learn and how many hours you have to work, but you can do different things. And we'll write a contract for you. We'll make it easy for you to do different things. Do as many different things as you can. That's the best advice I can give anybody. <laughs>